now I've got something on the bench that uh, to be honest with you I've had for quite a while but I didn't really know how to film this purely because it's so big it's the TP-Link TL ANT 2415 D. Um, it's the last version of this particular antenna. It's an omnidirectional antenna. It is the biggest one that TP-Link ever made. They don't make it anymore. It's um, now being discontinued because it's a uh, in today's modern uh, routers uh, access points uh, where they're semi-intelligent and we've got MIMO built in. It's uh, a kind of a redundant dinosaur and originally TP-Link envisioned it for uh, you know university campuses uh, to get uh, signals in coffee shops back in those early days when Wi-Fi was uh, rearing its head uh, in the uh, mid 2000s phones were also coming online with Wi-Fi connected that sort of thing but as I said it is a dinosaur um, the kind of uh, carried on in life uh, camping and caravan enthusiasts also loved these and this one in particular I got from a uh, a wreckers yard car wreckers yard it was originally on a uh, camper van um, purely because it's so big and you can park up you don't have to worry about where your signals coming from and um, it is a 15 db antenna and it also goes to show uh, with some of the ebay uh, listings where they claim a 15 db antenna what it really takes to be a true omnidirectional 15 db antenna but uh, for the uh, power requirements of wi-fi this is about at the limit for an omnidirectional but uh, just let me pan the camera around i've had to clear my uh, bench here and it is a pretty long beast it really is hopefully the lighting's picking it up as well because i'm not uh, really set up to uh, film this kind of thing on the other bench but uh, it is a big beast now this one does have the outside mounting kit which uh, quite often uh, you don't see if you come across one of these on ebay and you really need this outside mounting kit we've got this here that you can mount onto a pole and we've got the all weather connector here so your coax will come up through there waterproof connection there and then connect up to the end type connector which is just under here um, we can screw this off and as i say this is often often not included in ebay listings when you do see these so there you go there's the end type connector just in there now you may have seen uh, pictures or there is a video on youtube of some guy just uh, opening this up and wondering uh, what's going off in here and basically it's stacked arrays stacked on top of each other uh, as I say it's uh, 15 dB of gain but the um, beam width of this is extremely narrow so it has huge nulls top and bottom and you know it's strange to think of sometimes depending on where uh, you may be sat uh, close to an access point um, a small 3 db antenna can outperform this uh, because the null's so big if you sat too close to this antenna you'll be sat in a null a little bit like sitting in the uh, eye of a storm and a 3 db antenna would outperform it as i said this is a bit of a dinosaur but um, let me cut this off i'm going to cut around here very carefully so we can extract it and then take a look at the elements underneath now here we are back on the normal bench to be honest the lighting is uh, a lot better on here and uh, to be quite honest with you this antenna it just repeats itself um, you know it's just stat elements so once we see the first couple of elements that's basically the antenna it just repeats itself as it goes along now I've managed to uh, part this from the rest of the body without damaging it cutting it I just used a little bit of heat to uh, separate it with the epoxy so now i'm going to try and pull the antenna out now this is an extremely fragile antenna on the inside and of course it's quite old now as well so we need to be careful
So here's a short uh, section of the antenna then. It is uh, a little bit more fragile than you would expect when you open this up. Uh, I think by the size of it, the tubing, etc., you'd think uh, there'd be something more beefy in here. But it's not. It's quite a fragile antenna. Uh, you may have noticed that this was a little bit bent when I pulled it out. I don't think I did that. Uh, that was probably uh, when it was being constructed. These little spaces here that stop the antenna from rattling around on the side walls of the tube. Uh, this one's been put on wrong. Um, so I, I don't think anybody's had this apart before me. But uh, they're probably put together by hand. And as for the measurements of this antenna, because it's a... Uh, capacitive design because of the uh, loading coils here or coils here uh, it makes the antenna capacitive so then the wavelength is much shorter than 31.5 uh, millimeters for 2.4 uh, gigahertz Wi-Fi uh, it's uh, at the 25 millimeters that we've seen before on uh, these type of antennas so we've got 25 millimeters there uh, 25 millimeters there 25 millimeters and 25 millimeters it does have a uh, very small ground cylinder here a little bit shorter than 25 millimeters but it's also got quite a widish diameter on there so you know it probably all balances itself out along but uh, as you can see it's just uh, segments um, just stacked on top of each other as an array i mean in its own right from here to here that's one antenna and from here to here that's another antenna and they're just stacked on top of each other so as i said we've got a uh, coil here i normally call it a loading coil uh, some people get a little bit upset but it's a coil it gives uh, the antenna capacitance and here we've got uh, this is called a compensation cylinder so if we take the antenna from here to here um if you th think about this as a sentence then basically this is a sentence here and then uh, the the compensation cylinder is the full stop and then we get the uh, second antenna the uh, second sentence here then a compensation cylinder and a full stop i think that's the easiest way to think about it the uh, you know the compensation cylinder kind of tells the antenna that uh, you know that's uh, part one and then we've got part two and they're all stacked together to uh, create an array may not work for you but that's what works in my head now I've got a little bit more of the antenna exposed and as I say it just repeats itself all stacked arrays on top of each other it is a collinear design and I've stopped here because this is an interesting point to stop and I did initially at the beginning of this video call this um, you know a bit of a, a dead end they don't make it anymore and uh, it's probably at the limit of where you could uh, effectively have an omnidirectional antenna for 2.4 gigahertz remember you know the power the legal power in 2.4 gigahertz really this is at the top end of the the scale don't confuse things with uh, some of those omnidirectional ham radios or even a cb radio they use a little bit more power and i've stopped here because probably from here got one array there two three four probably here where it stops that's going to be in the ballpark of 7 db of gain just there and you can see i can fit that on the bench quite easily in the shot of this camera and you have to think this is a 15 db antenna so everything else going that way is to get it up to 15 db so even doubling this section would not get you anywhere near 15 db it probably get you around uh, 10 db doubling this and then as you go progress from 10 db it does start to get a little bit stupid with the length of it to try and get those extra 5 dbs out same as a yagi i mean a yagi you can have a 7 db yagi it'll probably be about this big um three elements three parasitic elements uh back reflector and uh, active uh, element in between uh will give you 7 db now to get 14 db it's going to be much much bigger adding many more elements just to get it to uh, double uh you know if it was as easy as say doubling this length here uh, around 7 db to get it to 14 db uh, wouldn't be a problem but um, you know it, it really doesn't work like that especially once you get beyond about 9 db especially with a yagi and something like this it starts to get uh, silly long just to get a uh, few extra db out of it and as i said that's why i said this is 
at its limit it's at its limits for power and uh, it's at its limit for a size where it doesn't get too silly now here it is laid out on the other bench so uh, you can see it in all its glory and I've put some little notes uh, around where round about uh, the dbs should be in relation to this antenna and you can see there at 5 db uh, I've got a sticker there and so you can see how small the antenna would be to be uh, 5 db or how big the antenna should be and then I've got another one there at 7 dB so again it's not getting too silly with its length there third over here I've got 10 dB so 10 dB is from there to here so again yeah it's getting big but it's not getting silly but uh, to get it from that 10 dB all the way up to its 15 dB you've got to almost double the length again just to get that extra 5 db all the way to the end and that's uh, you know a nice visual so you can see that uh, doubling the length of the antenna does not double its dbs basically half again just to get it that extra 5 dbs up to 15 db and terminating right at the end of this antenna we've got uh, a half wavelength instead of a quarter wavelength that uh, half wavelength will be 50 millimeters double the quarter wavelength that we've got in between here because remember it's a capacitive antenna here we are then back on the uh, opposite bench with the slightly better lighting i've got it curled up like a snake so you can see it all here and uh, yeah there's not a great deal to this it's just uh, stacked elements into uh, one array uh, collinear antenna and it terminates with a half wavelength at the end like you've seen me doing in the last couple of videos where I've been taking a look at uh, collinear antennas and this is why I decided to uh, add this one in a um, few people have asked me about this over the last uh, few years and as you just saw with this video the, the biggest problem I had with showing this one is just the sheer size of it but hopefully you get an idea of how this uh, works um, yes it was popular at the time in its day but nowadays we try and make uh, smaller form factor antennas and use the energy that's uh, generated from access points a little bit more wisely there's no point in uh, putting energy into uh, a place where nobody's using it you want to focus all the energy into a place where people are using it rather than just blasting it all out in uh, you know an omnidirectional direction and some people over here probably not going to use it and some people over here are desperate for the bandwidth but uh, yeah this is why it's had its day now but it's still quite popular with uh, camping and caravan people um, you know to get the free uh, Wi-Fi on the camping site for instance so hopefully uh, you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, you've learnt something from this. Um, yeah, you could quite easily cut all this up and make uh, 14 different uh, antennas out of it, little uh, uh, 5 dB uh, antennas out of this, but, you know, uh, <laughs> whether you would do that or not, you know, I won't do that. But uh, what I am going to try and do is get all this back into its tube without uh, damaging any of these elements too much and uh, I'll just keep it here um, just as an oddity um, you know a little bit like a uh, dinosaur uh, you know really as far as antennas for the Wi-Fi spectrum are concerned uh, nobody really wants anything that big anymore so if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up comments or questions drop them below I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one